Okay, everybody, here we are, man, back again. This is Deep Purple, Who Do We Think We Are? Um, this is side two, and the review is going to be attached to it on the back end. I might have to break it up if uh, YouTube doesn't accept it as a unit, and then just uh, do a review separately, and then we can all meet in the review and share our comments and whatnot. Anyway, hey, man, side one, excellent. I'm very, very happy to be back on the Deep purple chronology train and uh apologies for dropping the ball in deep purple uh many of you have taken me to task with it so uh yeah thank you very much for your patience and all that man i'm enjoying the hell out of deep purple this album so far has been the shit man let's check out side two who do we think we are side two let's get it
excellent. It went from being an okay song to a great song with an extended jam in the middle. The only thing I don't get though is why is the song entitled Rap Bat Blue? If you know, tell me. something more, isn't it? Oh, 
Russell gets its solo platform almost as much as the guitar.
fearful of losing her. And he needs to offer her marriage to keep her. Takes you on a little bit of a trip, don't it? Great musicianship. Excellent in instrumentals in this. All right. That concludes side two of Who Do We Think We Are? Hey, man. Excellent album. Fantastic. I enjoyed every single track on this album, man. Fantastic. Let's take a break. Be right back. All right, man. So, who do we think we are? Both side one and side two, excellent tracks. Every single one of them. All together, great album, man. Yeah, um, the most notable hit, of course, is um, Woman from Tokyo. Uh, but you know, you don't always have to have notable hits, commercial hits, in order for uh, the album to be good. And this was a great album. You know, I liked every single song on it, man. The singing is superb, man. Ian Gillen, his vocals, crisp, clear. You don't have to strain to understand it. The musicianship is on point. Uh, pace, and I believe it's Glover. A fantastic rhythm section. Gives such a fantastic platform for um, the remaining three to do their thing. Whether it's vocals, whether it's a guitar solo or a great organ solo, piano solo. All of that is all good, man. Fantastic, man. These guys are fantastic credit to the classic rock genre, let me tell you. Um, let us do a review. So this is the end of side two. Uh, I'm going to go into the review now. And if I uh, get blocked with YouTube, this is the cutoff point. Just so you know what I'm up to, man. Uh, quite a new, few new subscribers have joined ever since I got back onto YouTube. So it's just to explain the method to my madness here, man. Uh, and a big part of my madness is going to Wikipedia and doing a little bit of background so I have a basis to make some decent comment and not just uh, shoot from my ignorant hip, right? So let's uh, do a little read, man. Get a little background on the song. See if we can learn something about the motivation for the album, um, what was happening around them at the time, all of those things, man, really contributes to creating um, an album, creating the mood uh, to help the artist to create, you know? So I really like um, the story and the climate behind the music. So that's why I do a Wikipedia read, just in case you're wondering. All right, man. So. Yeah, okay, so I got the uh, Wikipedia page for Who Do We Think We Are. So, Who Do We Think We Are is the seventh studio album by English hard rock band Deep Purple. Released in 1973, it was Deep Purple's last album with singer Ian Gillen and bassist Roger Glover until Perfect Strangers came out in 84. Musically, the record showed a, more, a move to a more blues-based sound, even featuring scat singing. Although its production and the band's behavior after its release showed the group in turmoil, with frontman Gillen remarking that, quote, we'd all had major illnesses and felt considerable fatigue, the album was, though, a commercial success. Deep Purple became the U.S. top-selling artist of calendar year 1973. The album also featured the energetic hard rock single Woman from Tokyo, which had been performed on several tours by the band over the years. Now, despite massive sales, the group disintegrated among much infighting between band members as well as conflicts with their managers. The album's lineup would come to an end after a final concert in Osaka, Japan on the 29th of June in 73. Ian Gillen left the band following this album, citing internal tensions, widely thought to include a feud with guitarist Richie Blackmore. However, in an interview supporting the Mark II Purple comeback album Perfect Strangers, Gillen stated that fatigue and management had a lot to do with it. Okay, and he's quoted as saying here, quote, We had just come off 18 months of touring, 
and we'd all had major illnesses at one time or another. Looking back, if they had given decent, if they had been decent managers, they would have said, all right, stop. I want you to all go on three months holiday. I don't even want you to pick up an instrument. But instead, they pushed us to complete the album on time. We should have stopped. I think if we did, Deep Purple would still have been around to this day." Unquote. Wow. See what I'm talking about? Some strong, strong uh, sentiment. Good management was everything back then. And added Jerry Bloom, the editor of the book More Black Than Purple, quote, at this point, Deep Purple had become hugely successful. Success breeds demand. Demand breeds more work. More work means you're spending more time together. Generally, when you spend more time together, you get on each other's nerves more." Unquote. Roger Glover was fired shortly after Gillen's decision to leave. The last Mark II concert in the 1970s before Gillen and Glover left was in Osaka on the 29th of June, 1973. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, let's go down to reception. Let's see what they've got to say here. The album received mixed reviews. Anne Chauvy of Rolling Stone re uh, reviewed the album negatively and comparing Who Do We Think We Are to Deep Purple's breakthrough album In Rock wrote that the former sounds so damn tired in spots that it's downright disconcerting and the band seems to just barely summon up enough energy to lay down the rhythm track much less improvise." Unquote. Damn, man. In a retrospective review, critical review, Eduardo Rivadavia of All Music expresses the same opinion and writes that, apart from Woman from Tokyo, the album's songs are widely inconsistent and find the band simply going through the motions, although he does praise Rat Bat Blue. On the contrary, Reviewer David Bowling writes in the blog critic site that Who Do We Think We Are is one of the band's strongest and stands near to the top of the Deep Purple catalog in terms of quality, providing some of the best hard rock of the era." Unquote. How uh, much more contrast can you get coming from these reviews? You know? You talk about mixed reviews, it's basically just night and day between the reviewers, man. One is praising it, one is cutting it down. I think it's wrong to be comparing one album to uh, a previous album. You gotta look at the album specifically for what it is. And I think that um, they were being judged harshly here for not having more commercial hits on the album. I mean, the songs are good, uh, the musicianship is good, the singing is good. I'm not seeing any evidence of them being, uh, what did she say, tired or uh, uh, barely summoning up enough energy to lay down decent rhythm tracks. Yo, man. Yeah, so when you're comparing, uh, yeah, so she was comparing this to In Rock. I think it's just the wrong way to go about um you know, uh, giving your review. Um, you've just got to look for the album for what it is. If it fell out of the sky into your lap and you listen to it, that's how you've got to approach it. You can't compare it to uh, something before. Well, I guess you can, but I don't think that you're just going to get an accurate reading. And my reading, not knowing a lot about Deep Purple, uh, is that this was a really good album. I enjoyed it a lot. And I don't, and I'm certainly not alone because uh, David Bowling. Uh, he liked it uh, as well, you know. But what do you think of this album? Compare it to their best and give um, um, a reading and a rating. Or look at it from another perspective, from my perspective, just for what it is. You know, like I said, um, it seems that it was only uh, my woman from Tokyo that was a notable commercial hit. But you can't deny that the rest of the songs were damn good. You know what I'm saying? So, but then again, too, I got to put myself in their contemporary mind. Back then, they had a smorgasbord of fantastic creative music. They were deep within the Renaissance period of 
classic rock creativity. So I think that they were just fat on the hog and spoiled as hell. What do you think of that? I think that's what it is. And um, not that she's meaning to be nasty, but I think that she was just uh, judging them from a bar not only established by themselves, but what was going on with all of the fantastic music in and around at that time. What do you think of that? Let me know. But all the same, all together, I really like this album. I would play it over and over again, and I wouldn't skip a single uh, track. That's my test, the skippability test, as I call it. And I wouldn't skip a single track, man. I really enjoyed it. The musicianship, the classic rock sing signature sound, the really, really nice extended jams, and how the organ has as much um, solo time as the guitar. Man, Deep Purple has some really great winning elements, and all five members are master musicians, and I really enjoy listening to them. It's a very, very pleasurable listen, um, Deep Purple is. And I wish I was old enough to have, um, and inclined enough to be around back then to see them in their heyday. That's what I wish. All right, now, so that is my reaction and my review to this excellent album. And, you know, forgive me if I come off as being a little bit ignorant. Well, I am ignorant because I just don't know. But uh, I'm just going by how I feel, how I hear things. And I don't have a trained ear like a musician. I certainly don't have this deep-rooted knowledge that most um, music critics do. But I just know what sounds good to me. And this sounds damn fine to me, man. So, okay, I'm just uh, scrolling down to my notes here, man. So this concludes my Deep Purple... Um, portion of my uh, um, Unholy Trinity weekend. Uh, Led Zeppelin went out first with uh, Curse of... Geez, I can't even remember the name of the damn song. Uh, that one. And um, now I've finished this one. It's on to Black Sabbath, and I believe it's Mob Rules. The, the album After Heaven and Hell. Uh, we're into the Ronnie James Dio years. I believe it's Mob Rules. So I got to do some running. I got to run back to work. I'm on my lunch break. Got to run back to work, finish that off, and then come back. And uh, I should have enough time to um, uh, at least get outside one of Mob Rules, if not actually both sides. I'll push for both and then save um, ZZ Top in my quads for uh, tomorrow. Uh, and I'll have a couple of hours before going to work tomorrow. So I think that's how I'll, I'll break it up. I want to get my uh, Unholy Trinity done, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So uh, so that's what's happening with CZ Top. Complimentary quads, the same thing, as I mentioned. And uh, final note is thank you very much for all of you who uh, showed me uh, enough consideration for me to do uh, a tribute to Kenny Rogers. I appreciate it. Yes, uh, Kenny Rogers is not classic rock. So thank you for not jumping down my throat about, uh, oh, he's not classic rock. What the hell are you doing? You know, so thanks for not sweating me like that. You know, it shows that you've got class and that you've got respect and consideration for uh, a great contributor uh, to music on a whole, to our social culture on a whole. So thank you very, very much. You know, there were a couple of people, but they're not even worth mentioning. So thank you. I appreciate that very much. Kenny Rogers means a lot to me. And uh, like I said, even though the music is not classic rock, um, you got to give respect to where it's due. And sometimes I will sometimes stray outside of the lines. And this guy is an exception to that rule, man, Kenny Rogers. Uh, just like I did with um, uh, uh, Johnny Cash, you know, there are a, a couple of exceptions to that rule. And so thanks again. I appreciate that very much, uh, your consideration and your respect for a great artist who has uh, passed. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, yeah. Okay. I got to bounce, man. Uh, yeah. Okay. I got to go back to work right now. So I'm going to bounce and I'll see you in my um, mob rules reaction in a couple of hours. All right. Peace out.